hello, I didn't see you over there. My name is Kristen Cornell Williams and I'm your sculpture professor for this semester. I will be in Germany the first week of classes at an artist residency, which is really exciting. Um, I'm sad to miss the first week of classes, but it was a three week residency in Germany where I get to meet European artists and I can't wait to come back and tell you all about it. However, uh, while I'm gone, I have a couple of things for you all to do. The first thing is to say welcome um, and introduce yourself to a classmate um, and ask out what their favorite food could be. Um, this will come up later, so be sure to remember who it is you talk to. I just want you all to get to know each other uh, a little bit before I get back. The second thing that you'll need to do is to read the syllabus. I have copies placed on this table for you to peruse at your leisure or uh, tonight when you're tired from wire working, um, which I'll get to in just a moment. But uh, your attendance on Thursday will be a syllabus quiz, which I have emailed you all a link. You can also find a link on our class blog, which brings me to my third point. Um, all of the course information will be posted on our class blog throughout the semester. So if you haven't yet, uh, go to our blog. I have the URL on the board, in the syllabus, and an email I sent to you. And be sure to bookmark this blog. Um, it's, it's f18begsculpture.edublogs.edu or org. I think it's org. Um, I, again, I'm really sad that I'm not getting to see you on the first week of classes. I actually really like the first week of classes. Normally I do a really fun activity. Um, because I'm not here, I'm going to challenge you all um, to start making a sculpture. Uh, studies show that if you're deeply challenged, then you have deeper learning. And that's my goal as a teacher, is to really show you something and, and through physically working with the material and these techniques that we're going to all learn throughout the semester, that is where you're going to have the real true deep learning, is when you struggle and are challenged and succeed. Or maybe come close to success. Maybe, what is success? Success is learning, right? That's what we want to go for in this class, is to succeed at learning about sculpture. So my challenge to you all while I'm gone is wire working. I've had my work study purchase a bouquet, and it should be here on the table um, alongside your syllabi. You must choose one flower or maybe a fern from this bouquet, maybe baby's breath, which would be pretty challenging, but choose one, okay? Only focus on one. And um, I have this little plastic doodad, doohickey around here. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to reproduce your flower twice as big in wire, okay? So you're gonna have to do a little bit of math. That's where you should start. Um, say I'm reproducing this weird broccoli thingy, right? I'm gonna pick up a ruler. That's step number one. All the rulers are on the wall to my right um, off camera. You should see them hanging up. Uh, feel free to take it off the wall and use it, right? So my broccoli pod is four inches long. So if I multiply that by two, I get eight. So I need to make something that is eight inches long this is about two and a, and a quarter wide at the top and an inch and a half at the bottom. So I know that this will be three inches wide and four and a half inches wide here. You can write this down. I encourage you, if you enjoy drawing, to draw your flower um, because wire is very much drawing in space. That's what wire is. What you're going to be doing is creating a representation of your object twice as big in three dimensions. Your object should, shouldn't be one flat plane, right? This is sculpture. You gotta think about this plane, okay? In order to do that, you're gonna need to connect your wire, you're gonna need to manipulate your wire, and you need to observe your flower very carefully. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of different techniques. I am not going to reproduce my broccoli because that's what you all are, have, have to do. Um, and I don't have time for that because I'm about to go to Germany. What was me? So the first tool I'm picking up is called Wire cutters, wire cutters. Um, I will zoom in, cut to wire cutters. Um, and you'll see, these are very sharp snips to cut wire, okay? And 
Um, bear with me if you know all these things. I'm just going to assume that you all know nothing. That's why you're in a beginning sculpture class. You might not have ever touched tools in your life. You might be very familiar with tools. This is not a slight against you if you are very familiar with tools. I'm just going to explain it for those of us who aren't. Um, so with the wire snips, the wire cutters, oh, look at that. So quickly, so easily I was able to cut my wire. The wire that we're going to be using is called rebar tie wire. You can find this in Lowe's or Home Depot um, in the rebar kind of concrete section. It's cheap and it is sturdy. That's why I choose it for this project. So if I want something that is eight inches tall, I have to be careful to leave myself a little extra length. Okay, I can't just cut it at eight inches and expect my final length to be eight inches long because when you're connecting your wire, you need something physically to connect it with. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is the connection. Um, all right, here are some needle nose pliers. Here are some regular pliers. If you have some of these, please by all means use them because there aren't enough to go around. Needle nose pliers, regular pliers. Needle nose pliers, regular pliers. Okay, both of them. A plier in each hand. Put your tools back, put the rulers back where you found them, right, after you're done, clean up after yourself. This is just kind of like Barney level um, community sharing. Um, so I have these two tools. It's really important that you understand that some, some wire work you can do by hand, like if I'm doing a big curve, it might be easier for you to visualize it if it is in your hand, right? I'm trying to mimic the textures of my broccoli. So like the top is really, maybe I'm just gonna do the outside edge, right? I'm thinking about the contour of my broccoli. Right, okay, so here I have this. Maybe I wanna connect it here, okay? I could do it with my hand. But look, look how loose this connection is. Look how loose it is. Look how loose, it's very loose. I don't like it, throw it away. It's gonna move, it's moving. It's moving up and down. It's moving up and down. We don't want that. We want secure connections, right? When I look at your flowers when I come back, I'm going to be thinking about craftsmanship, um, whether you were expressive with the wire, whether you mimic the textures of the wire, and whether it's sturdy. If I could drop it on the ground and it doesn't lose its shape com completely, that's a sign of a sturdy construction. All right, take two. Here's some wire. Okay, I have another length of wire. And you'll notice that your hands are gonna get a little bit black when you work with this. If you don't want that, you can use paper towels and clean off your wire. Another trick I have for straightening wire is to go against an edge, because this is, comes in coils, so it's not gonna be straight. Um, if you do use the edge of a table to straighten it out, please use this table, not our nice work tables. Um, this is what I call the teacher table. The work tables just have, are, are still pretty new, we don't wanna damage them. So I'm gonna try and make it as straight as possible, potentially just so I can be the one who's adding the um, kinks and the unique um, bumps to your flower. Okay, so here I have this. Okay, I'm gonna make the top again. I'm holding it next to my thing. Um, and again, I would measure, if I were you, I would measure this and um, potentially even draw it. Draw out what you wanna bend um, and make a pattern. So one way you could do that is with a piece of paper, right? So I know it wants to be eight inches. I know it wants to be eight inches, so I can mark eight inches, right? And I can think, so the top of this is two inches, so I know about halfway down at four inches is when all the stocky bits start to emerge, okay? And I can think, okay, there's this weird divot in the middle, and it's all bumpy. I might want to draw it out. I'm not sure what you're gonna feel comfortable with. There's like two big nodes on my broccoli. And before you go about just to like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just drawing a profile. I'm just trying to get a feel for it. I'm looking at the big chunks of my object and thinking about how the wire can express that in space. Um, and maybe drawing will help you, maybe it won't, I'm not exactly sure, but now I have a better idea of what size the top part needs to be, what kind of textures I need to mimic in my wire. Um, I also encourage you to play with the wire a little bit before you go about on your final flower. You might make more than one flower to get to the final flower, that's okay. It's called practice. 
which is really, really important in sculpture, to practice. It's called art and art practice, right? So here we go. I'm saying like, this is where I wanted to connect. And I did some of this by hand, right? But when it comes to the connection, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my tools, okay? Um, and I'm gonna bend it, right? That's already a sharper bend than I could make uh, without a tool. And I'm gonna close my wire all the way shut and pull it out. So you can see, I'll show you closer up, that this is a tighter, it's a tighter bend, okay? I'm gonna hook my other piece into it. I'm opening it back up. I'm gonna hook my other piece of wire in, okay? I'm gonna hold on to it with my other pliers. Notice that I'm not trying to do this by hand solely. It is very difficult to do this by hand um, because you're just, your fingers are just not strong enough. There's a reason why we created tools. Um, see, I'm starting to bend the wire around and it's gonna be awkward at first. If you've never worked with tools before, it is gonna be awkward, but that's okay. That's why we're here practicing. And now what I'm doing is I'm twisting it. If you twist it too much, it tends to um, break. So just be, uh, be aware of that. Um, it takes a lot of twisting, but I've seen it happen. I've seen people just go really crazy and break it. And look, look at the length. Look at the length. There's a length, there's a length about this long um, of wire that I have to play with. If I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be the right size. So it's really, really, really important that you have it be the right size. Okay. Now if I want it to be really secure, I could bend the other side, tightly closed. And again, I'm using my tool and I'll leave this up here so you can see what I'm doing. And now, wow, that's really secure. That is really, really, really secure. And you can trim your wire, you can do all sorts of things. So I have a very secure top section. And I've actually left a little tail in case I want to connect to something um, below the, say this is the first part of the top of my broccoli thing, right? This is the first part, this is the, this is the first part. And then maybe I'm gonna flip this way and do a profile this way, right, out of wire. Just to give you an idea of how I might approach this. Maybe I'll check it. Oh no, it is way too big, right? So that's why I'm gonna come back to my object. I'm gonna observe it and think, how did I mess up so much? And maybe it's all gonna be okay. I'm just gonna manipulate it and bend it so it's the right size. Okay. Um, that's a little bit closer. Hopefully this is all sinking in really well and you're like, wow, she's so sensical. Um, all right, so that's the first thing. The second thing I'm gonna show you is um, different bends in the wire. Um, say you have a very spiky plant. This wire is kind of thick, so you're not gonna be able to get super, super, super tight bends, but remember how I showed you um, to close, to close your wire. I'm thinking like, ah, right? I'm closing it now again. All right, that's very tight. And maybe, maybe I have a very, oh, look, I just made a leaf of a flower, right? And I can connect it down at the bottom here with my tools. that is a bit more organic. All of your things that you're mimicking are organic. So it's not gonna be symmetrical uh, in the end. I mean, to, to, to the great extent. All right, um, and you wanna think like, what is the texture that I'm mimicking? Maybe I can bend it by hand um, and that will be enough, right? Maybe, that, maybe, maybe I can do that and that will be enough. Maybe not. Okay, so be expressive with your wire, make nice, tight, neat connections measure, um, and finally the last trick I have to show you is combining your wire to get a thicker length. Okay, this is, this is a pretty tricky one. So I'm gonna pull out a fair amount of wire. You should all have plenty of wire with what I've left out for you. Um, plenty, plenty, okay. 
So I have the length I want. I kind of want to straighten it and create a loop at the end. Okay, then what you're going to want to do is pick up your drill. Okay, this is a drill. This is a drill, it's a power drill. Battery run, there's a charger um, to the left of the sink, to the right of the whiteboard. This part, this part, this part moves and tightens, and the chuck comes down and tightens on a nice little hook that I have for you all. Okay, so you, there's three prongs that come down and tighten on whatever it is you want to put in your chuck. Let's call it a chuck. And you just want to hand tighten it. I don't know if you could hear that crack, but now I have a hook. You want to check and make sure it's not going to slip out on the end of my drill. There's different, there's a little clicky bit here. You hear it click to go forward or backward. All right, I have a drill, I have my wire. I'm making my wire twice the length. I'm gonna walk over here to the vise. Here I am with the vise. The vise tightens like this, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my two loose ends. This is why I need to fold it in half. I'm gonna put that in the vise and I'm gonna tighten it down as much as possible, as tight as I can go. Both of them in the vise. <clears throat> okay, I'm going pretty tight. Okay, and you take your hook, your hook, your hook, your hook, and you hook it into the end. I'm gonna pull it out as far as it'll go. All right, and then what you're gonna wanna do is unhook it. And now I have a thicker length of wire. If you have a very stocky flower, see how hard that was to open up? That's how tight you want it to be. So you have a very stocky flower. Maybe you're gonna want something like this. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. The other thing to think about is like, how am I gonna attach to the top, to the top, to the top of this? How am I gonna attach to this? Where is this gonna go? You wanna, you wanna plan out your attachments, okay? Um, but that's a really fun way of getting a nice and even length of wire. You can put two of these lengths together to get an even thicker stock, but after that, um, the, wires, the wire doesn't really want to bend with the drill. The drill isn't strong enough to pull together all that wire. Um, so you could potentially wrap like five of these together, but you'd have to do that by hand with hand tools. That's the basics of wire work. Um, remember all the tips and tricks I taught you? and you're gonna do great. We'll have one more class day to work on this before it's due. Um, it's gonna be due on the 28th, your final flower. Don't wait until, um, until I'm back to finish or work on your flower, right? Don't wait. I'm hoping to have open studio hours. I will let you know closer to the date I'm making this a little while um, from the beginning of school, clearly because I'll be in Germany during the beginning of school. Um, don't wait until the very end. I will let you know when the open studio hours are, if there are open studio hours. If you have hand tools um, and you're able to work on this in your dorm room or things like that, go for it, okay? Um, if you don't, please leave the tools in the sculpture studio for those of us who do not have our own personal set of tools. In the syllabus, there is a recommended tool list. Um, one thing that is not a recommended recommendation but a requirement is closed-toed shoes and pants. You'll notice that I'm getting a little dirty working with this wire. You're gonna get dirty in this class. I hope you like it, cause like, it's pretty fun. Um, it's not often we get to play in mud and plaster and make things um, in a college environment. Lastly, this class is for credit, right? You have to work, again, I know, I, this is how I started this time and end. You're gonna have to work really hard. Um, I'm gonna be there to help you, but I'm gonna expect you to be independent workers, which is why, um, in the syllabus, I say a minimum of six hours a week outside of class time. It might be 12 hours a week on certain, day, on certain weeks. I'm going to leave it up to you to time manage because you have very full schedules. I understand this. It's up to you to find time to come in and do the work for this class. Um, if this were studying for a test, you know, some people, um, it might, they might not have to study very hard. They might have a natural um, ability to remember the information in that class. Uh, for others, they have to study for hours and hours and have a study buddy and things like that. That's why I leave it up to you to figure out your best working methods. But at the same time, it is up to you to figure out your best working methods and to not wait till the last minute. Because um, a lot of times things break and you need time to fix them, okay? 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to this class. I know a lot of you in it, and I'm looking forward to knowing uh, many of you more um, through the art of sculpture. So I'll see you when I get back from Germany, and I hope you have fun with wireworking.